Uh, hi everyone, Swans the Knee Geese Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Geese album, 3D Country. Sophomore record here from New York band Geese. Got introduced to these guys through some of the teasers to this album. I enjoyed them, so I looked forward to the record, and that's pretty much it. I also caught them once on a very odd live bill that also included Alice Long Yu Gao, uh, and they gave a, a, a great performance. But yeah, since then I've, I've basically just been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to hear 3D Country and now it's here, let's go. Because man, this record is as fire as I hoped it would be. The songs, performances, and band chemistry on this thing are all great and in addition to that, I feel like this record also stands as a shining example of how to do revivalism right. Because now that I'm able to hear the entire project, it's pretty clear that one of Geese's biggest influences on this thing Thing, uh, are the golden days of hard rock and 60s blues rock. The opener 2122 has all of these twisted, fiery guitar riffs throughout it. Uh, it's very Zeppelin, it's very Hendrix. But the wildly overstated vocals and certain noisy experimental pockets of the track leave it feeling very new and modern and art punk. However, there's something about the band and the way they play that makes this record a little hard to place too. Because this could have just as easily dropped uh, during the heydays of many pro punk greats such as Richard Hell or Television, uh, New York Dolls, uh, MX80 Sound, even The Modern Lovers or something like that. So yeah, opener is fiery, hard hitting, great, but even when the band tones things down, uh, like on the title track, their odd charms still pour through. This cut is a groovy and low down fusion of classic rock and soul with some prominent pianos and show stopping background singers. Frontman Cameron Winter is just especially slaying it on the vocal side of things because the way he's just so over the top consistently on these tracks just makes them hit even harder. He's sounding like an emotionally unstable Warren Zevon. He gets especially animated and freaky on the closing track to St. Elmo. And kudos on his lyricism as well, because sometimes it reads uh, very interestingly like an absurd or surreal reinterpretation of the genres of rock music that he's pulling from, with lyrics like, hit me baby, show me the floor, as well as what I saw could make a dead man die. The song Cowboy Nude sounds like what you would get if you had the Strokes and Stones collab at their respective creative peaks. Plus also one of the most insanely hype rhythmic breakdowns I've heard on any song in 2023. New York City! I wouldn't say this record is all goofiness though, because you do have cuts like I See Myself. One of the most genuinely sweet and passionate love songs I've heard this year. The group chorus is incredible. The sensual grooves throughout the verses stick with me, and those falsetto highs that Cameron's hitting at a few points on the song are crazy. His range is insane. The song Undoer switches things up. It's an attempt from the band at hitting us with a very long, winding, kind of tense jam. Not my favorite song on the record, but the performance is great and it's awesome to hear, you know, a modern rock recording that feels very live, very lightning in a bottle, very in the moment. Conversely, the song Crusades is a lot more straightforward and to the point, uh, maybe to a fault, as the plainly strummed mid-paced guitar chords don't really inspire too much. Plus, I think the song attached to it isn't really a stunner either, uh, even if I do like some of the tangy strings thrown into the mix. But still, despite this uh, little lull at the midpoint, I think the record finishes as strong as it starts. There's Gravity Blues, which is quite glammy in comparison with all the other cuts, uh, with the pianos really coming in hot. Powerful vocal harmonies, guitar solos layered up as well. The band really can arrange a rock experience uh, when they want to. Be that on the psychedelic finish of this track or the weird uh, noise chaos freakout around the one minute and 20 second mark. Geese certainly showcases a lot of dynamics on this record, which is also the case for Mysterious Love, which features these uh, thunderous riff passages, some of the heaviest and most explosive on the record. But this contrasts with a very lush and hypnotic end with, again, more beautiful vocal harmonies and guitars layering up. Uh, not only that, but a hypnotic refrain that's, uh, I don't know, kind of unsettling when I read it and hear it over and over and over. Uh, some people are alone forever. Some people are alone forever. From here, we have the very regal and subtle Demoto and the multi-phased and string-kissed Tomorrow's Crusades. And it's cool to hear the band tie things up in a very versatile way toward the end of this record. Uh, not even coming close to painting themselves into 
into a corner really, while also uh, not pushing outside of their comfort zone too. But yeah, this Geese record, I'm really impressed. I think it's a nice, solid, well-written, well-performed rock album from a band with a lot of potential, a lot of personality, and a healthy base of influences that they very clearly pull from uh, without making it uh, feel like it's just an exercise in nostalgia or just, you know, kind of like a copy of a copy of a copy. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this record, Tran. Position, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Geese of Forever.